In this video, I'd like to show you the relationship between the electromagnetic spectrum and electrons. The spectrum describes different forms of wave radiation, ranging typically from gamma down to long wave radio. The radiation is described either as photons, which are little packets of energy, or more commonly as two sine waves perpendicular to each other with wavelength and frequency. Each type of radiation in the spectrum has a particular range of wavelengths and associated frequencies. The figure below is a typical representation of the electromagnetic spectrum. On top of the spectrum are numbers that indicate the frequency, which is wave cycles per second. Notice that the frequency increases from right to left. Below the spectrum, the wavelength is indicated. And notice that the wavelength shortens from right to left. A numeric feature not shown in the spectrum is energy. Energy of the radiation increases from right to left. In this video, I'll show you two equations that relate frequency, energy, and wavelength. Here are two equations that relate energy of radiation to the frequency and wavelength of the radiation. The first equation describes energy. This equation gives energy in the units of joules per photon. The energy is set equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times the frequency of the radiation. The second equation relates wavelength to frequency. The symbol for wavelength is lambda and it's equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. I'd like to apply the two equations I just showed you. The wavelength of a particular color of green light is 503 nanometers. First, determine the frequency of this color. You could use a figure of the electromagnetic spectrum to help you estimate what the frequency would be. You could see green light is around 500 nanometers, maybe a little bit higher, 500 to maybe five and a quarter nanometers. Unfortunately, in this figure, the frequencies are not listed above the blown up part of the visible spectrum. We could estimate that the frequency should be somewhere around 10 to the 15th. Using the equation lambda equals C over F, you could rearrange it and solve for the frequency. Substitute the speed of light in the numerator and substitute the wavelength in meters in the denominator to calculate the frequency as roughly 6 times 10 to the 14th. Next, let's determine the energy of one mole of photons of this particular green light. Use the equation E equals H times the frequency. Substitute in the numbers. You'll calculate that one photon is 3.95 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. But the question asks the energy of one mole of photons. Well, we know the mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So multiply the energy of one photon times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Electrons can be energized to a higher energy state. Although when an electron in an atom is displaced from a high energy state to a low energy state, energy is released in the form of a photon of electromagnetic radiation. This animation nicely shows an electron being energized to a high energy state, then being displaced to a low energy state. In the process of transitioning from a high energy state to a low energy state, Energy is released in the form of a photon. Now you can understand energy diagrams such as this one for a hydrogen atom. Energy is on the vertical axes, and across the bottom, 
their wavelengths. It shows the different electron transitions an electron can undergo and the associated wavelength for those transitions.